Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video six, and today we're talking about wavetables. So let's right click the display port and hit preset, and to load up a wavetable, let's go to oscillator one, select sawtooth, and select wavetable. And on the top of the hexagon, you can see where it says wavetable one. We can click this here, and now we're in our mode with all our options for wavetables. We can also select wavetable two, and yes, there's two wavetables inside Hive, which is really sweet. And we can select sawtooth from here, as, as opposed to the oscillator up here, and then select wavetable and get to the same place. So a couple things to keep in mind before we really start diving into this, Hive can only see .uhm and .wav files for their wavetables. And also a little bit further on that, they need to be in a very specific directory so Hive can see them. So for Windows and for Mac, I put the information where the directories are in the video description below. So take a look at that if you want to know where to put your wavetables at. Whether you downloaded them or made them, you know, whatever you want to do, put them in that right folder or Hive will not see them. Once you do that, you want to click here and then go to refresh wavetables here so Hive can rescan and then make sure that your folder is now going to load up inside this folder here. So let's kind of get into it here. So let's click here to browse wavetables. We have additive. Let's go to the first one here, additive chords, and we can take a listen and move through our position knob over here. So we have two bars. We have the top one that says additive and then the bottom one that says additive course. So the top one's going to be looking at the folder and the bottom bar here is looking at the actual file. So if we select next on the additive one, it's gonna take us to the next folder, which is complex, right? So let's go back to additive. And right now we're in waterfalls. So we can select through here and go to, let's go back to additive here. And we can select the bottom ones here and select through the files inside the additive folder. So that's the main difference between these two bars here. So let's go to additive course here and kind of take a look at things here. Generally, there is going to be some type of information here for the wavetable. So we have all this stuff here, these different fifth, seventh, fourth, add nine, major triad, major seven, and then we have six frames inside this wavetable, which is very helpful to know. And you'll see why in just a little bit here. So what's cool within Hive is in really other synthesizers that have wavetables, you're going to use an extra modulation source to modulate the wavetable. So you'd get like an LFO and you drag it onto your position or whatever knob it is in that synth and give it some depth. And then that would be the modulation source. However, what's kind of cool in Hive, so let's undo that right here so we don't have any modulation going anymore. We have this position knob and we have an auto position knob, which is kind of cool. So we go to from off down to one shot. And it's going to scan through this wavetable one time, right? One shot, it scans through the whole thing and then stops without wasting any additional modulation source on wavetable modulation. And then we have some loop options. So loop forwards, which is going to loop forwards. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we have loop forwards and backwards. And then we have a tempo knob here if we want to slow things down or speed things up. And the interpolation in Hive for these wavetables is very good. Even on Crosshair, we're gonna get to the different modes in a little bit, but it sounds very good when you're going through different waves. So let's double click this for now, go back to the first loop here. Now there's a couple options down here. So we have reverse, which basically reverses the orders of the frames in the wavetable. So for all the way here on the first position, we see this shape right over here and then we select reverse and then we go all the way to the end. It's gonna be the same shape. So like I said, reversing the frames inside the wavetable. And then we have cyclic, which is a very cool option as well because if we go here to the beginning and take a look at this shape here and then go all the way to the end, it's going to be the exact same shape. So it's basically adding the first frame to the very end, kind of making things a little bit smoother if you need to. Okay, so let's find a different frame over here. So let's go to 16 frames and <laughs> This is the moment where we kind of depart from a little bit basic synthesizer stuff to kind of a crazy territory called 2D wavetable synthesis. Yeah, it's gonna be wild, it's gonna be crazy, but trust me, hopefully you'll understand this by the end of this video because it is kind of confusing. Okay, so this wavetable here is 16 frames. So drill that in your head. This one here is 16 frames. And for this example, let's change it from crossfade to switch. So there's no interpolation. It's just these individual frames. Let's change this from off here for now and kind of scan through this manually. 
Mm -hmm. right? So you can hear them jumping into these individual frames. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because it's a little bit crazy to wrap your head around. So we have 16, right? All the way from the, from the front, from the beginning to the end is going to be 16. Let's take off cyclic because that'll give us a false reading of 17. Now down over here, we see this thing called tables that's kind of grayed out at one. So what this is telling us is we have one table, one wave table, and that's 16 frames. Okay, fine, that makes sense. So we can scroll through all one through 16, great. So now we select tables and we go to two. Now what's gonna happen is you'll see that now in this position, we are only gonna have eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's all our wave table is now. So basically try to think of this on a X, Y grid, right? So X is going to be left to right. So right now we have eight frames. So think of eight blocks from left to right. That's gonna be this position knob right here, over here that we're scanning through, right? So block one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from left to right. Now this position knob down here is basically gonna go upwards, right? So we have eight blocks on the bottom and then it's gonna take the next block. So whatever it would have been from nine through 16, it's gonna take those blocks and kind of stack those right at the top of the one through eight. And this position right over here is going to be the Y axis. So we get a little bit of modulation between those two. Kind of crazy to, to wrap your head around. Or we can do it in a different way here. So if we have 16 frames again, and let's say we chose four right over here. So now <laughs> we have this here. We have one, two, three, four. So we have four frames here, and then we have another four. So from five, six, seven, eight, nine is going to be the next row for the Y axis, and then so on and so forth. We're gonna have another four and then another four, making a total of 16. <laughs> Now this position knob here, keep in mind that this is only going to stay in crossfade. We can't change this to switch or anything else like that. It's just the way things are, but yeah, that's kind of just how that works there. And it can also get kind of interesting as well if we don't have a wave table that's exactly an even division of something. If we had 17 frames or something like 19, an odd thing, or put tables like something maybe like five on a, I don't know, 13, table something who knows what but it's kind of interesting too because the easiest way to really drill it in your head right 16 frames one through 16 is left to right and you have one table once you make it to two tables then nine through 16 you basically cut all those eight blocks and set them right above vertically the one through eight and this position right here is going to be the vertical modulation between those two and the more tables that you have the more you're going to cut those up and then stack them vertically and this position here, the first one here is going to be the modulation from the X axis. And then the one down here is going to be the modulation from the Y axis. So take a deep breath, kind of let that soak in. If that doesn't make sense, um, let me know. And I'll try to make it a little bit more easy. Hopefully if that, uh, it takes a little while to kind of get that in your head a little bit. It's kind of weird. You kind of have to play with it around a little bit and kind of just figure it out, get to know one, one another and all that good stuff there. But, uh, yeah, so that was the 2D wavetable synthesis. It's very cool, kind of revolutionary style over there. Last things we really need to go over is the different modes down over here. So we've seen switch, right? We're kind of just going through, let's go back to tables one. We're kind of just going individually through these frames inside this wavetable. So we're instantly jumping between the different frames. Next up, we have crossfade, and this is what it comes on by default, which does sound good, and it's it's basically smoothly interpolating via the magnitude of the waveform. Now, if you want really, really good quality and you're not afraid to spend a little bit of CPU power, you want to use spectral over here. So this one's kind of similar to crossfade, but the difference is that it also interpolates the phase of every partial, which is pretty costly. But it sounds really good, so let's go to a loop here and let's kind of slow down the tempo and kind of take a listen to that. It's actually really impressive. And then the last one down here, we have a zero phase, which is also kind of similar to the spectral one, but it forces the phase of each partial to be at zero first.
So basically the takeaway that we need to know is that if you want the best quality, the best interpolation from all your waves through your wave table, and you're not afraid to, to lose or use the CPU power, then Spectral is going to be where you want to go with. If you kind of do want to save some CPU power and the interpolation is not too important to you, but you still want a good sound, then maybe Crossfade is kind of going to be where you're at as well. But yeah, spend some time within the wave table here and kind of get to know it, know each other, like I was saying before, and definitely mess around with the tables because once that clicks and kind of makes sense in your head, it's really, really, really cool. So yeah, that was the wave table oscillator. Thank you so much for watching, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video.